Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. In this webcast, we'll talk about how to prepare your API program for peak seasons. I'm Maruti, a technical solutions consultant with Google. I help customers build their API programs with best practices and how effectively they can use APG products to build better APIs. I'm joined by my colleague, Janice. Hey, Janice. Hey, Maruti. Thank you for inviting me today to speak on this topic. I'm a technical solutions engineer. I've been with the AppG team for over six years, and I've been through six Black Friday Cyber Mondays with the AppG team. I've had the opportunity to work with some of our big customers for their peak seasons as well. And this year is going to be my seventh Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And I'm personally really excited about this year because of some cool new features in the Apogee product that's going to make customers' ability to diagnose problems faster. Now, before we begin our webcast, I want to quickly cover a few housekeeping items. What you see on your screen is the web console. At the bottom left hand is a Q&A section. And the Q&A section, you could post any of your questions at any time throughout this webcast. And then what you see there is a resource list section. Maruthi and I will be putting together a few resources that you could click on and check throughout the webcast and afterwards as well. Awesome. Let's quickly look at the agenda for today's session. To build a successful API program, you need to have best practices in place. You need to follow a well-defined process and use the right set of tools and understand how to effectively use those tools. All the tools and best practices we are going to talk in this session are important at every stage of your API program, not just for your peak season. But they are vital when you're preparing for peak season as by not having them in place can negatively impact your business. In the first section, we'll talk about API monitoring, which is Apigee's API monitoring to diagnose your runtime problems faster and how, how effectively you can increase your API availability. And next, we'll talk about some of the best practices on how effectively you can scale your API program. The focus in this section will be more on people, process, and technology. Later, we'll talk about how our customers plan for peak seasons in the past, and we'll give you a list or talk about some of the, some of the activities you can plan pre and during your peak season period. And finally, we'll show you a demo of uh, uh, API monitoring and security reporting that we have out, out of box. Let's dive into our first section. Your operations team is responsible to make sure your APIs are available at any point of time. And it's a complex thing, and especially during your peak seasons. Your operations team, in order to do that, should be able to investigate the issues, isolate problems, and also speed up the diagnosis to find the root cause. And then finally, take appropriate actions. And you also need to be very careful in terms of configuring your alerts. Too much alerting is a problem. At the same time, no alerting is also a problem. Right? And finally, you have to do all this, have everything in place before your custom customers are impacted, and, and also make sure you meet the SLEs that you promised to your customers. And that's where Apigee's API monitoring comes into the picture. Apigee's API monitoring works in conjunction with Apigee Edge Cloud. There are many tools in the market which you can use to monitor APG's APIs, API process. But APG API monitoring is integrated into the product and gives you an entire view of the, the value chain. It is out of box available. That way you don't need to configure. Once you log into the management console, your enterprise management console with your credentials, you can automatically see the all the alert, um, API monitoring tabs and tiles. And Janice, I know that uh, this was launched uh, like last year, and I'm sure many customers use this, the power of uh, the, the API monitoring uh, for their peak seasons. Do you have, do you, can, can you share, or do you have any insights that you can share uh, where this helped and how it helped uh, our customers in the last one year? Well, yeah, absolutely. In fact, before we launched API monitoring, our customers did not have any insight into the API runtime unless they had some kind of third-party tool that they integrated into the API proxies. Since launching API monitoring, it has been so helpful to operations team to allow them to troubleshoot their issues in a self-service manner without waiting to utilize the help of Apache support. So this was a way for them to diagnose, monitor, and investigate, and act 
Yeah. So awesome. I think the self-service uh, way of um, you know monitoring or diagnosing your problems is like sounds like a great idea. And for peak season especially, I could think of two features within the API monitoring that can be really helpful for the for, for the enterprises. The, f the first one is the collections, where let's say you have a lot of proxies, APIs, proxies, and now a uh, few APIs are more priority than the others. Now you can group them and, and create collections. Uh, you can group uh, a set of API proxies or targets, and then you can set appropriate threshold values for all those groups. And this way, you can actually diagnose issues faster. And also, let's say if you have alerting on top of them, you can notify the specific group or team on, on the issues that are happening. Right? And the second feature is the alerting itself. As of today, in the API monitoring, you can configure alerts based on the fixed value. Right? And with this year, we launched a new beta feature called anomaly detection, where you can take uh, alerting system or alerting into the next level. So let's talk about anomaly detection for a while. While fixed alerts are valuable, the thresholds for a condition keeps changing over time. And now this is where anomaly detection can help you. Anomaly detection is built on top of Google's AI and machine learning, and it feeds on your historical data. Like, for example, you can think of uh, a scenario where um, it can alert you in, in scenarios where you haven't even thought of. Right? An example could be like um, a slight uptick in 500 errors in a production in, within the region west. That way it can go uh, feed on the historical data and identify patterns and alert, alerts you uh, ac accordingly. So Maruthi, I'm gonna assume that there's gonna be different sets of thresholds that you could use for this alerting? Yes, that's correct. There are three levels of alerting as of today slight, moderate, and severe. Okay, so now what if I'm a customer and I wanna alert on any other conditions? What other conditions are there that's available? Sure, as of today, you can alert based on your status codes and also latency on, let's say, you can even filter it by regions. That's a really powerful tool. It's so intelligent, Maruthi. As part of next section, let's talk about few problems enterprises face while scaling their API programs to meet the peak season demands. Let's say you wanted to launch 10x new APIs, a new set of APIs, as you're launching a new product for the first time, or you wanted to do more and more integrations with your upstream service or your backend service. And also, you may want to enforce more security policies and in a consistent way as you are opening up more channels to consume your APIs, right? Like now your consumption model changed and you wanted to um, enforce or make sure you have all the security controls in place. And then you also need to validate or need to have a way to make sure all the processes that you have in place, like CI, CD, or any kind of governance and rules are able to handle that scale, right? For example, you have you might have built your CI, CD when you have like three teams or three API, like set of APIs. But now with scale, you wanted to revisit in regular intervals to make sure those frameworks or practices are capable of handling the scale at which you're growing, right? And then you also have to have a process in place to handle the issues that arises because of uh, uh, 10x uh, traffic during peak season. And finally, how do you onboard teams um, so that you can develop uh, APIs in a rapid way and you're ready for your peak season. Not just during your peak season time, but governance is what you need irrespective of wherever you are in your journey. But governance is a key aspect when you think of scaling your API programs quickly and safely. That's the pillar for your program. So let's talk about what exactly is governance. Governance in one sentence is enabling speed and agility in order to meet your customer demands while you manage risk. Finding the balance depending on your organization. Startup versus traditional, the, com the governance model varies from the organization to organization, and also one of the key requirement or factor that decides is your risk appetite versus your speed requirement. Your governance model should be able to address three main areas. So the first one is people, where that can be your external app developers or consumers and your internal API developers as well. Process, you need to have a consistent process 
irrespective of whether you're launching, let's say one API or thousand APIs. And then finally technology, where you need to use the right features for the right purpose, and also uh, following best practices while using them is the key. Like uh, in Apigee Edge, we can say that shared flow to promote reusability, and also use security dashboards to make sure your APIs comply with your compliance standards. Now let's see how governance applies to your program while you are getting ready for peak season. Few ideas that you can incorporate are define your API team members' key roles and objectives and make sure they know their core responsibilities. Increase the ease of adoption of the platform. Make sure the lessons learned are shared between the other team members and emphasize more on reusability. Establish a center of excellence or center of enablement team, which is responsible for making standard decisions and also uh, who can enable other teams who may want to onboard their API proxies or APIs to Apache. And the more important thing is you need to come up with a solid testing strategy. From the time you develop your APIs to it goes to production, it has to go through various test cycles like you need integration and performance. So you need to come up with a, uh, the right testing strategy in terms of what test cases to include and also the right tools to uh, do this testing. They were important for your API program at any stage, but when, when you're preparing for your peak season, if you have a process, take this as an opportunity to review it. If not, it's time to come up with one. One of the key goals of your governance model is to come up with a process to speed up the time between when the developer develops the APIs until they get deployed to production. That's where continuous integration and continuous delivery comes into the picture. You might have built the CI CD pipeline when you say, let's say when you have 10 APIs, but now as part of preparation for peak season, you need to validate the framework if it is capable of supporting your scale and incorporate additional goals as required. As part of your CI CD framework, you should be able to automate your tests, code merges, automate um, static code analysis, like let's say JS Lint, if you have JS or JavaScript policies, and even use Apigee Lint open source tool, which is again, one of my favorite tools, which can do things like validating the bundle folder structure. When I say bundle, it's the APG API proxy, you know, the, the, the code structure correctness to things like checking the body element before you do some kind of uh, uh, policies which uh, rely on that body element, like JSON threat production or XML policies. A proper CACD pipeline can also help create short feedback loop between your team members and leads to less manual intervention. And make sure you have the documents published to your developer portal in, or in an automated way. We have seen customers use a wide variety of tools the focus should be on the process rather than the tools. Now, Marie, the, the Apache Lint tool sounds like an awesome tool. Since it's an open source, customers can fork it themselves and use their own rules. Can you give an example why customers would do this? A share example? Sure. There are close to 40 rules as of today in the Apigee linting, but let's say if there are any requirements to, which are specific to a customer use case, um, definitely this can be forked and uh, can be extended, right? Like few scenarios I could think of are where you wanted to have standards like uh, having a business unit name as prefix for your API proxy, just to differentiate the proxies from one business unit to another business unit, so that can be done. And the other scenario you could definitely do is to make sure uh, before you deploy any API proxy to production, you can enforce check like, checks like whether a, a particular security policy is enabled or included as part of the proxy or not, right? So this, this, this is definitely possible. That's good. So now, if I don't have a process in place, where can I go to start building one in order for me to be get ready for the peak season? If you're looking for a place to start, I would definitely recommend you to look at the Maven, con Maven, uh, Maven plugin of open source project, which is built around uh, the management APIs, you know, the APG Edge management APIs. You can integrate your existing tools, like if you're using any specific tools uh, for your testing or source code analysis, so you can definitely use all those tools and integrate it into Maven. And at the same time, you can integrate the Maven plugin as a whole to your standard uh, continuous integration and delivery tools like um, Jenkins, Bamboo, etc.
right? In addition to API proxies, you may also want to think about automating your configurations. When I, say, when I talk about configurations, I'm referring to the resources within the Apigee system, like target servers, API products, cache, and KVMs. And if that's w what you are looking for, then you may want to look at the Apigee Maven config plugin project, which is available on GitHub. One of the other features that can help you scale quickly and also helps you to reuse a certain functionality is shared flows. You can combine a set of policies into shared flow that you can consume from multiple API proxies. Right? For instance, let's say you wanted to have a set of security policies common across all your APIs. So you can group those policies into your shared flow and you can um, have them included in your API proxies. That way, you can, end, you can make sure you have consistency across all your APIs. At the same time, it shortens the development time of those proxies, and, and also you can easily manage the code. Apigee API Security Reporting is an, another out-of-box feature that you can see are available when you log into your management console, just like the API monitoring, right? And it provides you an in-depth insights to make sure the right security controls are in place for all your proxies. This feature can help you identify and diagnose security incidents quickly, and you should be using, using this actively during your peak seasons. Right. We will talk about uh, more, more about the API security dashboards and how that looks as part of our demo in the later sections. So we've talked about API monitoring, anomaly detection using Google's AI and ML, API security reporting, and CI/CD to increase your API availability and scale your API program. So the next step now, we put it all together and we're gonna talk about what activities the operation teams need to do before and during their peak season, like a checklist. But before we go there, we wanna show you some numbers because we all just love numbers. One point I like to highlight is our achievement during our 2018 Black Friday and Cyber Monday weekend it was a result of putting the best practices in place and doing planning activities up front with our customers and working with them throughout the Black Friday weekend. So in 2018, the biggest traffic peaks that we've ever seen, we surpassed five nines, hit 108 TP, 108K TPS, with a 95% growth rate over the following year. This Black Friday and Cyber Monday our customer base has really grown and we're expecting to surpass these peaks this year. So as a next step, we wanna emphasize on some planning activities that are playing a major role in your peak season readiness. Special attention is required to plan aspects of your peak season and there's a higher rate of um, possible impact into your business and than any other season. So. Some of the things that we need to talk about is API proxy refactoring. Refactoring API proxies is needed to make sure that you optimize in terms of readability, performance, and updating policies to the latest versions, etc. Now, for instance, you might want to use your JWT Java code policies um, in the past, but you want to change that and replace it to the new inbuilt JWT policies that are going to help you improve your performance and also your security. You should also consider other areas of enhancement such as adding fault handling and publishing these changes to the consumers. Also, handling redirects to HTTPS and enabling cores if the consumption model changes. This kind of thing could help add security to your APIs if you haven't already done so. Now when estimating your traffic numbers, you could use your analytics and API monitoring dashboards within Apigee to come up with the right estimates for your own live traffic, and then estimate the increases that you think will happen for your peak season. Also, you need to really work with your business teams about the promotions during your peak season, and they could help you with the estimates for the sales for those promotions, and those things can help you estimate your traffic numbers. After that, I highly recommend encouraging customers to also work closely with the Apigee support team and validate that the capacity is properly scaled and if there is any pre-warming that's needed. Now for testing, this is a profoundly important at every stage. 
you want to have a robust testing strategy in place that will include unit tests, integration tests, and performance tests, as Maruthi had already said. Most importantly, it has to be automated. The way, irrespective of the environment that you're deploying to, the API proxy has to be tested throughout all phases of your pipeline. The best practices that I recommend is you should have testing goals that maximize the coverage of your code and stimulate the real world API transactions that you will see in production. Now, testing should be done in your performance environments that mirror your production. We also have seen customers doing testing in production itself, which is risky. But if you have to test in production, I recommend planning out your capacity in advance and running your tests during a low traffic period. Security reporting. So security reporting can help you identify security issues ahead of your peak season. It's super critical that security planning is done ahead of time and checks are put in place so that you don't hit into a security breach of data during your high traffic period. So with API monitoring, Again, API monitoring can be used during your performance testing to quickly diagnose and isolate problems quickly before your peak season. Configuration checks. Check if there's necessary configuration tuning that's needed end to end. For example, if you have JVM heap space tuning that needs to be done for each of your target servers, you wanna do that so that you're not hitting any resource limits. Also, if your target servers need to be mapped to different backends, make sure those are correct. Caching allows you to optimize the performance of your target endpoints and implement response caching policies will help you greatly over your overall response times to your consumers. And make sure your caching policy expiry is up to date according to your API use case. Throttling. As peak season traffic increases for your consumers, you really need to revisit your quotas, your spike arrests, and your rate limiting policies, updating them to accommodate the increased traffic and to optimize performance for your consumers is very necessary. And do so so that your premium customers have the counts that they need adjusted for the higher amounts of traffic that you're gonna see. Now, during your peak season, there's a few things that you need to consider as well. Moratorium. The Apogee team abides by a moratorium period where we do a code freeze and configuration freeze so that no releases get rolled out before the peak season. Similarly, we recommend you freeze your code and your environments before your peak season and make limited deployment changes before your peaks. If you have a hotfix, make sure you have a plan in place to test the hotfix in advance to your peak. API monitoring can help you gain insights on your live traffic to address problems very quickly. Now, you should set up an active war room and triage internally, whether this be a virtual war room or a physical war room, in order to enable the quick troubleshooting and communication between operations, development, and business teams, an active war room is what I recommend. Put your playbooks in place for your alerting so that you can act upon them and recover from any type of surprises that may come into play during your peak season. Now, the last thing, if you run into any problems, do reach out to a support team. The Apogee support team is going to be available 24 by seven for any of your API runtime traffic impacting problems. So let's stop here and let's go into our demo and let's uh, show you some of the cool built-in features that will help you during your peak season. So this is our monitoring dashboard, and this is how it looks like after you log in to your Apogee Cloud Org. Now let's talk about some of the features in this dashboard and things that you could do. Now, if you wanted to monitor things in the last hour, you would go to this recent tile. And if you wanted to see a timeline of your historical API transaction over the last hour, you could go to the timeline view. So my favorite is the investigate screen. And this will show you key metrics and attributes for your API traffic. What I do is I am interested in specific status codes over a time, and you could even select it to be the last four hours. Now, if you're monitoring your live traffic, you might want to turn on auto refresh. 
Now, let's say if I wanted to investigate a specific problem, like for example, this 502 error, I could click on it and it brings up a suspected cause. And it gives us the fault code, where the fault source was, and the specific proxy with the error. And it also gives our specific like instance that had that error. Now, the view logs gives you ability to drill down specifically on that particular request. And then you could also do a little more investigation by collecting the message ID. And then you could use this area here to do a custom report. With a custom report, you could go in and you could put in a filter just on that particular gateway flow ID and then create a couple of different dimensions for any type of custom reporting that you want to make to investigate that particular request. So the next thing I want to show you is collections. Collections is really useful if you wanted to take a look at different proxies that were your high traffic proxies or the proxies that is particularly to your part, your business. Let's take a look and take and see how you could create a collection. So I'm going to call this my Black Friday collection. And this could be your collection of your high traffic proxies. Now you can add on the proxies that you're interested in monitoring. And you can save this collection. Now you can go back into that investigate screen. And in this investigate screen, when you select your proxies, you can go into your collections and find your Black Friday collections. Now you have a view of only these two particular proxies and all of the different fault codes and status codes over a course of a timeline. And what's also great to be able to isolate problems is to see if there's a proxy specific problem, target problem, or an Apogee specific problem. And these, this is very powerful. Now, let me get into alertings. Now you're familiar with fixed alerting. Now new with our beta program with anomaly detection, you could create some alerts for your Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Let's do one on latency. Instead of saying fix, you could say is an anomaly detect that you want to detect. It's in your whichever environment that you want, prod. And here's the different metrics you could select. We're going to look at latency. And let's set the threshold to be a slight uptick in latency at a 90 percentile. Now, if you were interested in a specific region, for example, let's say US West has most of your traffic and you're very particular about problems that may occur in US West. You could select US West and now you could specify your alerting mechanism. You could do an email, Slack, PagerDuty, or webhook. In this case, I'm just going to do alert to an email for Black Friday alert at google.com. If you have a playbook link, add your playbook link. And then you can specify how to throttle your particular alerting so that you don't get alerted too much. So with your enabled alerts, you would get your email notification and then with the investigate screen, these are all very powerful ways for your Black Friday monitoring and alerting. Thanks, Janice, for showing us the new anomaly detection feature and the other AP monitoring features. As a next step, I'll show you the security reporting dashboards that are inbuilt into your R, just like the AP monitoring. The overview and runtime tabs over here provides you a holistic view of the entire organization. In this screen, in this dashboards, you can see things like the number of environments you have for the org, the number of proxies for each environment, 
the traffic received for a particular environment for the duration you have selected, and also things like the change of the traffic when compared to the previous period. The configuration dashboard over here is one of the powerful features of security reporting. Here, you can see the list of proxies for a particular environment and the list of traffic management policies like spike arrest, quota, list of security policies like OAuth, API key validation, and if there are any protection methods like XML threat protection policy or JSON threat protection policy. The list of extension policies like Java, JavaScript used in this proxy, and finally, if there are any shared flows used within this proxy. This dashboard also gives you visibility into the virtual hosts. How many API proxies are exposed on HTTPS versus non-HTTPS? If you want to further know the details of all the policies that are used in this proxy, you can double click and see the list of policies on the right tab. Finally, the user activity tab shows you visibility into the actions performed by a particular user on the organization. Okay, it's time to take a few questions now. I think we have a few questions here. So let's look at the first one. What does, what role does Apigee team play in planning for Black Friday, Cyber Monday for their customers? Um, that's a great question. Janice, I think you may want to take this one from, from the support perspective. Okay, absolutely. So for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, we reach out to our customers and we proactively ask them to share traffic projections with us. We provide them a checklist which helps them to plan the right capacity, what we need for our stateful infrastructures like our data stores. Now, um, during the customer's performance testing, they can reach back out to us to make sure that their infrastructure is monitored and to check on the resource capacity, like how much CPU is being utilized, how much memory is being utilized. We also use API monitoring to help them drill down on status codes and latencies. And this may help them to correct problems in advance of their big event. Also, we abide by a moratorium so that we aren't making any new releases and changes to our production systems prior to the peak season. So as a goal, we want to have a flawless Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend for our customers and we eat our own dog food. What that means is that we internally use our own tools such as API monitoring and anomaly detection to proactively find patterns of problems and resolve them even before the customers can notice them. Now the next question is, if we want to plan for our performance testings, where do we start? And I think, um, Janus, this is for you. Okay, no problem. This is a common ask from our, question, from our customers. I would suggest that you start by going to the Apigee documentation page first. We have a page called Performance Testing that gives you a checklist of items that the Apigee team would need to know about your test. For example, what we need to know is about which org and environment you're testing on, how much TPS you're planning, what type of policies you're testing, and of course, the date and time of your test. Alternately, you can share information about your testing goals so that we can work on analyzing and fine tuning your infrastructure so that it meets your performance goals. Now, as a part of the process, the Apigee team tries to work closely with you to make sure that you have the auto scaling properties in place for your load. And also, now, at the end of your test, you may have, if you see some type of problems, you could also open up an Apigee support ticket and work with the Apigee team to help you troubleshoot and identify the root cause of your issues. Awesome. Since we are running out of time, uh, I think we'll follow up uh, with the rest of the questions offline. And if you want us to deep dive into any of the topics we discussed so far, please leave your comments below. Thank you. Thank you very much.